Hello, welcome to this Bible study, which today is just an intro into the book of John before we get into reading it properly. So, here goes. John's Gospel is the most unique of the Gospels, as we will no doubt discover as we go along. I want to start by covering a couple of the basics, who wrote it and when. The general consensus, of course, is that John's Gospel, the three letters called John and the Revelation were all written by John the Apostle. And though the majority of scholars and believers are happy with this, there are those who argue against John, a Galilean fisherman, being able to write these five works. There are various theories and ideas surrounding the authorship of all the biblical documents associated with the name John, and some have some have all written by the same man. Some have the Gospel, Revelation, and Letters all written by different men. And some theories have the Revelation and Gospel under the same pen and the letters under another John. So the question then is, who wrote the Gospel that we call John? One thing I can say for certain is that I cannot say for certain. The author of John's Gospel does not name himself, though he does call himself an eyewitness to the events in chapter 21 and 23 he says this this is the disciple who testifies of these things and wrote these things and we know that his testimony is true from the recording of various details uh, i.e how many water pots there were at the wedding in cana how many baskets of fragments were left how far across the sea of galilee they got before they saw jesus walking on the water and even what the servant's name who had his ear hacked off by peter in the garden of gethsemane was we can be certain that whoever john was he was indeed an eyewitness to the events due to the fact that the wedding at cana happened before all 12 of the disciples were involved before jesus was really doing anything or had any kind of following it makes it highly likely that the author was one of the early disciples which john was but it's always possible there could have been another john in the mix even that early on it does need to have been written by someone familiar with the landscape of jerusalem and israel someone who had knowledge of what the pool of bethesda looked like specifically with its five porches because it was destroyed along with the temple in 70 a.d the author also needs to be either a Jew or at least someone immersed in the Jewish scriptures and culture of the synagogues, someone who had a working relationship at the least with the high priest. Though the name John is not used to describe the author by the author, the phrase the disciple whom Jesus loves is. We would all tend to associate that phrase with John the Apostle because of the Last Supper scene. But was it John? Could it potentially have been someone else? It literally could have been anyone who wasn't listed. In the story in chapter 13, we have Peter and Judas mentioned by name. It wasn't either of those two. Again, John springs to mind here because Peter asks this person, who's leaning on Jesus' breast, to ask Jesus who is going to betray them. Peter and John are linked in many places throughout the New Testament. They had a fishing franchise together. They were grouped together along with James by Jesus and taken by him to two specific moments. And even after Jesus' ascension, they are still hanging out together, preaching and healing in Jerusalem. It would seem highly likely then that Peter would ask John to speak to Jesus on his behalf. Highly likely, but again, still possible that it was someone else. If it was one of the main apostles, and then it would make sense that any of the apostles mentioned within the Gospel of John wouldn't be the disciple Jesus loves. Within the Gospel, then, we have mentioned by name Andrew, Simon Peter, Philip, Nathaniel, also known as Bartholomew, Judas Iscariot, Thomas, and Judas, not Iscariot. <laughs> Seven disciples named, leaving us with Matthew, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the zealot. Of those five, only one is called John. The original title of the book was Kata Ioni, or According to John, which makes it highly likely that it was indeed John the Apostle who was both the disciple Jesus loved and the author of the Gospel. However, let's just take a quick look at the other theories, just in case you're unconvinced. If it is not the Apostle, who wrote this Gospel? Who else could it possibly have been? Proposed candidates over the years have been John of Patmos, considered by some to not be John the Apostle, because the writing in Greek is apparently quite different. 
John the Presbyter, an early church figure mentioned by Papias, the Bishop of Heropolis, that would be Turkey. John the Evangelist, who could be any of the others, or some other John. A hypothetical Johannian community, comprising various authors not necessarily called John, who wrote the Gospel, the Letters, and the Revelation together under the name John, or some other random dude called John. When you look at them like this, they all seem quite insubstantial and theoretical, and you have to ask yourself, why would some unknown John's word be considered as highly as this gospel is and was by the early church elders? If we read up on the early church elders and leaders, we find an abundance of consensus for the author being John the Apostle. Justin Martyr, an early Christian apologist, writing from 100 to 165 AD. Irenaeus, the Greek bishop, we're talking 120 to 200 AD. He argued against Gnosticism. There was Clement of Alexandria, Tertullian of Carthage, Origen of Alexandria, Hippolytus of Rome, Theophilus of Antioch, Ignatius and Papias. These dudes were all quite happy with John's authorship. I know that's a lot of names, and you possibly have very little reference to these names, so let me cover a couple of them. Arrhenius wrote a document called Against Heresies. It was a book designed to address the Gnostic teachings that were gaining ground in the churches in his day. In his book, he specifically identifies John as the author of the Gospel. He says this, John, the disciple of the Lord, who also had leaned upon his breast, did himself publish a Gospel during his residence at Ephesus in Asia. Irenaeus was a disciple of Polycarp, who himself was a disciple of John, and knew John personally. It is through conversation with Polycarp that Irenaeus declared that John was the man who laid his hand on Jesus' breast and was therefore the disciple whom Jesus loved. Eusebius of Caesarea, another name you possibly have never heard of because I never had heard of it. He was known as the father of church history, quoted, and he quoted Clement of Alexandria saying, Peter, having preached the word public at Rome and by the Spirit proclaimed the gospel, those who were present, who were numerous, entreated Mark as he attended him from an early period and remembered what had been said to write down what had been spoken. So that's your sign that Mark's gospel um, was sourced by Peter. On his composing the gospel, so that's Mark, he handed it to those who had made their requests to him which coming to Peter's knowledge, he neither hindered nor encouraged. But John, the last of all, seeing that what was corporal was set forth in the Gospels, on the entreaty of his intimate friends and inspired by the Spirit, composed a spiritual Gospel. So what John did was go, these ones, Mark, Luke, Matthew, these are all corporal. So they all focused on Jesus' body. So then John went, well, I'm going to do something that focuses on the spiritual side of stuff. So if these two learned and well-respected men accepted John the Apostle as the author, I don't see why the rest of us need to argue. These men were both wise and scholarly. They studied their doctrine. They were philosophers and church leaders. One of them knew John personally. So if they accepted John the Apostle as the author of this gospel, why do we debate it at all? There is also some extra biblical documentation to indicate that John's authorship was taken for granted. So this is a snippet from the Meritorian, I hope I said that right, fragment, a document of 85 lines which consists a list of the books of the canon as they were in 170 AD. Now we only have a portion of this work, but it's clear that the author had no problem with John the Apostle being the author of the gospel that bears his name. So here's what is written. So the fourth of the gospels is that of John, one of the disciples. To his fellow disciples and bishops who had been urging him to write, he said, Fast with me from today to three days, and what will be revealed to each one, let us tell it to one another. In the same night, it was revealed to Andrew, one of the apostles, and also, I should add, the brother of John, that John should write down all things in his own name, while all of them should review it. Sorry, not John's brother. Peter's brother. I think the most compelling argument for John having written this gospel is in the life of Polycarp, who I already mentioned. He died somewhere between 155 and 167 AD, depending on which scholar you listen to. He was a personal friend of John the Apostle, as I said, and was a preacher of the word. This man lived after the other apostles were dead and gone. <coughs> Excuse me. 
His role was to authenticate the various teachings that had started to circulate by comparing them with what John had told him and what he had heard from the other disciples prior to their deaths. He had no doubt that John had penned this gospel. Again, I have to say, why would we argue this point? Some of the arguments against John the fisherman being the author is that he was a fisherman, a Hebrew fisherman. How, argue the detractors, could a Galilean fisherman have written such sophisticated prose? Well, for a start, he had the Holy Spirit whispering in his ear, and for another thing, it's not like John wrote this in a vacuum, or even in one draft. The Bible was written much like any other book. It had several drafts, got edited, had people reviewing it and giving constructive criticism. The actual act of writing it might not even have been done by John at all. He may have employed a scribe, as Paul did on several occasions. The thing is, the Bible didn't just drop out of heaven. John's gospel has been carefully crafted to convince the reader of Jesus' godliness. That doesn't just happen. Take it from me, I've lost count of how many times I rewrite anything I do. Whether it's a lesson or a book or a poem, it's never written in one hit. I read and I reread and I edit and adapt and I change. Books like the Gospel of John would have by necessity have had several rewrites and lots of people giving their opinions before it was fully considered complete. And nowhere do you find doubt about it coming from the Apostle John. As for the timing of John's Gospel, it's readily accepted that it was the last of the Gospels to be written, but there is debate about when it was penned. Some of the theories state that it was after John the Apostle was dead, which is why they argue for another John, obviously, though modern thought discounts this latter date as unlikely. It is most likely that it was the last Gospel written, as there are many things left out of John's Gospel. The full list of the twelve, the details of John the Baptist, the genealogy of Christ, to name a few. This may indicate that John left these details out because the others had already covered them and therefore there was no need to repeat it. Writing was an expensive exercise back then. Papyrus was expensive. Ink was expensive. Paying for a scribe even more so. They didn't waste words. So it makes logical sense that John would repeat information that everyone knew sorry, wouldn't repeat information that everyone knew by that stage, backing up the theory that John was penned last. But can we date it? Well, a British scholar called C.H. Roberts was looking through fragments of papyrus in 1934 when he came across a small portion of John chapter 18. It was dated to be from around 125 to 135 AD and considered to be a copy of the original gospel. So it's not the original gospel. It had been discovered in Egypt, which means that the portion had to be copied, given out to someone who then travelled to Egypt, and then at some point it became refuse and was buried, which certainly means that it was written within John's lifetime. The Muratorian fragment that I referred to earlier contained the phrase, to the fellow disciples, which would mean they were all still alive, or at least some of them. It mentioned Andrew by name, which would indicate he was still alive and present when the book of John was written. The traditional death of Andrew in the Greek city of Patras on an X-shaped cross um, is meant to have taken place in 60 AD, which would be really early for the Gospel of John to be written, though not impossible. All in all, it's almost impossible to date it with any real accuracy. Myself, I am happy to rest at John the Apostle as the author. And I'm not sure dating it perfectly is necessary to understanding what it is John is trying to tell us, which leads me to this question. Why did John write this gospel? Why did he feel it was lacking in the other three that he penned his own? Well, we're going to look at chapter 20, verse 30 and 31, because John actually tells you why he wrote it. And he says, and truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. John's whole purpose was to help people believe in Jesus as the Son of God, and that belief in him would give us life. Each of the other Gospels looked at Jesus in different ways. Matthew focused on him as Messiah. 
Mark as the suffering servant and Luke as the perfect man. John's focus was on proving Jesus as the son of God and God and that's why he penned it. To bring the other element of Jesus' nature that the other three had mentioned but not really focused on. I am looking forward to studying this in depth, though I have to say I am a little daunted by the very nature of the book itself. The language is quite poetic in places and poetic phrases are not always easy to understand. That being said, I am ready to start on this journey through John. I have no idea how long it will take us, but given that Matthew wrote in plainer language and it took us six years, I'm not expecting to come to the end for some time to come. But you know what they say. It's not the destination that matters, it's the journey. So I will see you guys next week with the first few verses and we'll see how far the rabbit hole goes. Kia ora.